Hello fellow psychonauts, it's me, Dolo, back at it again with some more psychedelic content. <laughs> this week we're going to explore the encompassing mega archetype generally known as the other. Many people who have taken a decent amount of psychedelics have experienced an other of some sort. An entity, a voice, the presence of another conscious being. Especially in breakthrough psychedelic experiences on substances such as DMT, salvia, and high doses of psilocybin mushrooms. The other presents itself in numerous ways. People hallucinate fully autonomous life forms that can be very abstract or it could resemble things that we see here on earth, both animate and inanimate. Some examples of things people encounter on their experience are jesters, Buddha, Krishna, bugs, cacti, aliens, Jesus, ancestors, Gumby, humanoid frogs, elves, and all sorts of other mystical creatures, to name just a few. <laughs> Sometimes these fuckers are not paying attention to you, but most often they seem to be communicating stuff to you, whether that is a lesson, a joke, a song, or just gibberish. They communicate this through auditory hallucinations, gestures, and frequently through telepathy. <laughs> Beaming those vibes straight into your noggin. But even when they are not communicating with you, most often they are interacting with the experiencer in some way. For example, they might be showing you something, operating on you, or bringing you along in a marching band or something. When these entities are Earth-like, for lack of better term, the entities can walk right up to you, put their hand on your shoulder, they're so lifelike. However, they tend not to be so plain. These entities exist and operate by different rules and laws of physics. They could go zany Mary Melody's cartoon on you. When the entities are more abstract, all sorts of boundaries are blurred, such as the distinction between foreground and background, between language and vision, synesthesia everyone and even between yourself and the other hence the telepathy sometimes when there are many little beings there is a hierarchy a head honcho if you will this can be the band leader of the parade the herding salvia shepherdess the head tyke of the machine elves or the guardian orchestrator overseer of the trip these usually invoke a sense of awe power authority and wisdom this is why psychedelics are often regarded as teachers so humbling is the presence of the mega other that many regard them as real live gods or goddesses. But how can all this possibly be? Especially when users claim their experience is realer than real. Psychonauts have kicked around many theories as possible explanations for what the other could be. Is it a parallel universe? Just one of the many outlandish scenarios of the multiverse? Could it be aliens making contact by using eccentric technology as a communication device? Maybe it's plant spirits and the plant's consciousness is merging with our own. Could it be essentially the afterlife? The spiritual higher plane of existence where gods and spirits exist? Are they ancestor spirits turning on the living in order to guide us to our inevitable fate? Maybe it's future humans that live in the technological singularity and are reaching through the matrix. Or perhaps, maybe, potentially, the other is you. Uh, alien ancestors of a parallel universe, I can believe. But me? Come on. The head tyke, is that me? Well, James Kent is a psychonaut who does not believe that DMT and other psychedelics transport us to the spirit realm. I'll allow him to explain. I think that you've got a recurrent feedback excitation going on, not just within the cortical layers, but between the visual cortex and the memory processing complex in the medial temporal lobe. So you've got this very, very fast, high speed, probably up in the high gamma range, feedback between your memory complex and your visual cortex so that anything that you think is immediately brought into visual memory. And when you focus on that in visual memory, it becomes more articulate and more detailed. And the longer you focus on it, the more detailed and the more articulated it becomes until you per perturb the feedback cycle and then it all fades away. 
So visual hallucinations are likely produced by high phosphine activity, and psychedelics, especially NNDMT, puts this into fifth gear. Phosphine is the perception of light without any light actually hitting the retina. You can actually see this yourself. If you gently put pressure on your closed eyeball, just don't hurt yourself, you can kinda see it. The way psychedelics work their magic is by dampening activity in the brain's default mode network, which is responsible for much of how we perceive the world and how we operate within it. Decreasing activity in this part of the brain allows for other parts of the brain to communicate with each other when they normally couldn't. The most relevant function of the default mode network, for the sake of this video anyways, that it is thought to be the neurological basis for the self, as well as for thinking about others such as memories and collection of facts about oneself, reflecting on one's emotional state, as well as speculating on other people's thoughts and emotional state. While we still don't know what exactly happens to the mind when this part of the brain is dampened, but seeing how the network has such a high correlation with the sense of self and others, I can imagine that it could blur the boundary between what is perceived to be your thoughts and what are the thoughts of someone or something else blurring the boundary between what is and is not you. The DMN is also suspected to be a factor in conditions such as schizophrenia and dissociative identity disorder, both of which involve hallucinating voices and perceived presences of others. There also is a very prominent psychological phenomenon of pareidolia and anthropomorphism. Pareidolia is the tendency for humans to see faces and things. All one need do is put three dots on a piece of paper and the mind will perceive a face in it. Its evolutionary function is theorized to be a survival mechanism. Being able to recognize a face in the darkness would put one at an advantage by avoiding being eaten. But it also serves as a way to stimulate our social needs and quell loneliness to a degree by allowing one a greater ability to anthropomorphize. Anthropomorphization is the tendency to project humanness onto non-human things. Humans tend to personify animals, objects, and abstract concepts as a means of relating to the world. As a human body is a human's means of perceiving a human's reality. We only know what it's like to be human after all. And we anthropomorphize everything, pets, plants, foods, emotions, countries, machines, corporations, the universe, everything. Look at Greek mythology for fuck's sakes. Dionysus, the god of getting lit. So if we can personify a breakfast cereal, why not a spectacular display of psychedelic induced hallucination? We personify psychedelic substances as well, such as Lady Salvia and Mother Ayahuasca. Check out my video on psychedelics and gender for more on that subject. The intentions of these anthropomorphized hallucinations can be altered depending on the substance, dose, the method of ingestion, among many other things. Salvia seems cruel and wicked due to the dysphoric intensity of smoking a high extract, or ayahuasca may seem like a nature goddess when drinking the brew isolated from urbanized cities in the Amazon. While there still are many questions raised with this theory of the other, and more research needs to be done, this is still the most plausible explanation of this phenomenon. And I know a portion of my viewers are going to be thinking, really Dolo? A figment of your imagination? How reductionist. But I don't think the theory is reductive at all. It is still extremely complex, and these experiences remain extraordinary. The brain is an amazing thing, don't underestimate its ability. There is much benefit in accepting that the psychedelic other is you. I do believe there is value in being able to disrupt our default way of processing reality and opening communication with our subconscious for therapeutic healing reasons, as well as a means to seek deeper understanding of yourself. All that being said, there is also a strong potential for danger if we give in that this psychedelic other exists outside of ourself. Many people truly believe that they are communicating with higher intelligences, be it gods, aliens, or elves, or some combination of the three. This is evident in so-called channelers of machine elves. 
YouTube channelers, if you will. Both TripWhip and 434 believe that they are the actual chosen communicators of the machine elves. This is not only an ego trip feeling like the messenger of the truth, but it can also lead to people believing these voices only speak the truth. Everything they tell us is, re is, is true and also that they're real because there's nothing contradicted in, in those messages. Even Terence McKenna, who said himself, it is no accomplishment to hear voices in the head. The accomplishment is to make sure it is telling the truth fully believed the theories that were revealed to him on mushrooms until his last breath, long after his time wave theory was debunked. Could it be my time wave theory is immeasurable and does not hold up to scrutiny? No, it's science that is wrong. And while not inherently, belief that the voices in your head are real can lead to alienation from your peers, irrational thinking, and in cases where the voices are negative, dangerous acts such as self-harm and harming others, as well as erratic behavior. I'll talk more about machine elves and their supposed communicators another time to keep this video short. There's definitely a lot more I would like to say about this subject, but I will say that I don't think these people are crazy, as that's an ineffective ableist term anyways. About 1 in 10 people hear voices, and it's not always caused by mental illness. Ask your doctor. No, no, not those doctors. <laughs> no shade, just get a second opinion. If you still believe that these psychedelic entities exist outside of yourself, I really appreciate you watching to the end of the video. You may disagree with me, but by listening to counterarguments to your beliefs, you are remaining skeptical, which in my opinion is an incredible virtue to have. And it is my hope that you remain skeptical. Especially because for many, these beliefs become core parts of one's identity, which can make it much more difficult to be critical. Let me know what you think these entities are and tell me all about your experiences down in the comments. You know I love to read them. A dear thank you to the Salvietic Interbeings of Patreon for making these videos possible. Become one yourself by signing up at any tier. Thumbs up to support my channel and subscribe for weekly content. Ring the bell if you're not telepathic though. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you didn't there's always next week. Trip safe everyone. The head tyke, is that me?